Hey what's up guys? If you're new to my channel, my name is Jean and this is my husband right here. Hello. Eric. Yes, yes indeed. No, we're gonna say Eric. Call me E. Okay. This is my husband, call him E. No, <laughs> uh, this is my husband E. Okay, whatever. This is my story time of my labor and delivery at 25 weeks. And the main, the main character, this little boy right here. Hey. Oh, oh this is so too bright. Hi, this is my baby boy. Yes, the main, the main character of this story. Say hi. Hi. I'm trying to figure out how to start this story. It was March 1st when I went into labor. I had just, actually, I wasn't even 25 weeks yet. I was 24 weeks. That night, I was going to be 25 weeks. I woke up feeling a little weird, drained, um, but I pushed it off and I was like, I'm fine. Um, my sister saw that and she was like, girl, like, what's going on? Like, you need fresh air. We need to go for a walk. And I was like, no, I cannot. Let me just lay here. Let me just watch TV and sleep for a while. So that's what I did. And I still wasn't feeling any pain. 12 o'clock hit, 12 in the afternoon on March 1st hit. And that's when I started feeling some sort of pains, some um, cramping. And I had no idea what it was. I remember this specifically that I had an app on my phone that tracks contractions. So it tracks how long your contraction is and how far they are from each other. Um, so for some reason, I got into the app and I turned it on when I started having this pain. And then I stopped the timer once it was off. And I did this every time I would get that pain. And when I did it, I would have the pain for like 30 seconds. And then it would stop and I would get it after two to three minutes and this kept happening so every two three minutes I was having this pain but I was like ain't no way it's contractions because I was barely 25 weeks me having contractions me going into labor was far from my mind because for months I was going to the doctors and I was healthy I was completely fine she said nothing was wrong with me everything was good so I'm thinking that I am having a healthy pregnancy Everything is completely fine. I'm good. Yeah. I'm getting this pain and I'm just pushing it off. I looked it up and online it said that it could be Braxton Hicks. But then again, I was like, it's a little too early for Braxton Hicks. This might be in my head. So I automatically assume this pain that I'm feeling is probably in my head and that it's going to go away. So I'm here dealing with this pain. Mind you, I'm supposed to be working. I had called my manager and I was like, listen, I'm feeling under the weather. I'm pretty sure that's what I told him. And I said I will get on in a few. Fast forward, he gets home at like 4 o'clock, 4 something o'clock. He said that while he was at work, we were on the phone and I had told him that I wasn't feeling good. Yep. But I don't remember that. She said your stomach was hurting. Like, just kept coming and going. I told you that over the phone? Yeah. I don't You said I'm having pain in my stomach. I don't remember that. But anyways, he comes home and he sees in my face that there's something wrong. Obviously, I was having contractions. But just no one would have thought that that's really what it was. So he comes home and he's scared. I didn't know what was going on. So I texted her mother because she ain't tell her mom. Her mother came downstairs and was like, everything okay? And I told her she just, she's having cramps. She told her mom what she was feeling. And her mother said it was just gas. <laughs> yeah, so, that's, I feel like that's a Caribbean thing. Like parents always think that it's gas, any problem that you have. And they're like, you need some ginger ale. Did she tell me that I needed to go take some ginger ale? Yeah, she did. Yeah, she was like, go get some ginger ale. You probably, you have gas. Which, and I believe because the night before I didn't eat very well. I didn't really eat like all day until like 10 p.m. And I had gas at that time. Um, so I was like, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. So she calls my dad. My dad comes downstairs and he's like, like, what's going on? He also thinks like me having contractions is just it's far from his mind, too. He's like, your mom is probably right. You probably have some gas or the baby is moving down there and you're probably just feeling that pain. But both of them said that if this continues on and you feel like something is wrong, then you should go to the hospital. So I'm like, okay, you're right. 
so they go back upstairs and I finally I believe I tried to get to work and um, at the time I was making calls for work so I'm on the phone with people I am having this pain and I'm trying not to make noise while I'm on the phone with other people after like about two calls I call my manager or I text him and I was like listen I can't um, I think I need to log off for for the day and he said that that was fine so I went ahead and I laid on the couch I prayed that the pain would just go away so while I'm still having this pain he starts calling people because he's freaking out just a little bit I don't know what's going on I called my cousins he said it was something natural I called my sister she said it was something natural but if something goes wrong if, if it gets worse you need to go to you need to go to the hospital yeah it was maybe like around like six o'clock at night at that point and I realized that all day he didn't really move very much and the last week or so he was very active I would feel him move maybe like every two hours or so i thought about it and i was like okay hold on let me give it a couple of minutes and let me try to think and feel to see if i feel him move and within 20 30 minutes i felt him move so i was like okay that i'm good so i told myself all right he moved i think everything should be okay um and I had come to the conclusion that I just I wasn't gonna go to the hospital. I was just going to go to sleep and hopefully the pain will just stop because I'm sleeping and I will wake up and I'll be fine. That's what I was hoping and praying for. Fast forward maybe another hour or so, it's about like seven, seven something at night. I decide to get ready for bed. And usually I just hop right into the shower or whatever the case may be, but something told me to go use the bathroom and i didn't even need to pee like that i didn't have to use the bathroom for real but i just was like you know let me use the bathroom before i get into the shower so i go ahead and i use the bathroom and i wipe and i see a faint streak of blood and what is so crazy is that i wouldn't have noticed it if i had just took a shower and i didn't use the bathroom yet and just cleaned myself I wouldn't have seen that so the fact that I went to go use bathroom and saw that is just it it's just it's crazy to me sometimes I see that and I call him into the bathroom I'm like yo I'm bleeding I'm bleeding and I start freaking out at this point he's like I, I'm sure you're fine like I don't think anything is wrong I'm sure you're fine I didn't think there was anything wrong with her at that time I didn't think I thought it was that's just that's because he doesn't you didn't know he doesn't know I know that if you see blood especially at that stage in your pregnancy something is wrong like, okay now nah, i have to go let me go tell my dad he was like okay yeah you need to go to the hospital right now and i was just at the same time i was just so angry because i felt so icky like because i hadn't taken a shower yet and i was about to get ready to hop into the shower because i feel so nasty and i had to just put my clothes on and leave because there was just there was no time for that y'all i just i went into the hospital feeling so yucky oh my goodness and the let me not even get into that i just <laughs> we get into the car and i am freaking out i'm on the verge of crying and he's just like i'm sure everything is okay i'm sure everything is okay and i am trying to believe that so bad and in the back of my head i knew that something was wrong but at the same time I was telling myself, listen, if anything is wrong, they're probably just going to give me some give me some medication and I'll be back home tonight and I'll be fine. That's what I was thinking, but that's not what was going to happen. We get into the hospital and they are asking me so many questions and questions that I might have should have known, but I didn't because of how early I was in the pregnancy. Like one, I did not know who my doctor was. I didn't know his name. I didn't have a birth plan. She didn't I had have anything. Nothing, she didn't have nothing. Nothing. Every time for my appointments, I was seeing nurse practitioners. I hadn't completely meet my doctor yet. A nurse takes me to a room and she checks to see if she hears a heartbeat. So she goes ahead and she checks and I hear the heartbeat. She hears the heartbeat and she's like, okay, um, I hear a heartbeat, so that's good. We fill out some papers, then take us to another room, and then they hook me. Um, they hook a belt, a belt on me. I don't remember. I don't know what it's called, to but check and see if he was going 
he was having contractions. Yeah, to check to see if I was having <clears throat> contractions. Um, so she, the the lady puts it on and she's looking at the screen. I'm hearing all the the noises, I guess, of him moving. And she just looks at the screen for like two mm -hmm. to five minutes. Time goes by and I'm like, okay, so what's going on? She, I had to ask her. She was hesitant. Yeah, she was very. She was hesitant to she tell us. She didn't know how to tell us. Yeah, so I asked her like, am I having contractions? She's like. Yes, yeah, you are having some contractions. And I'm like, okay, what does that mean? Why am I having contractions? She was like, we don't know. We don't know yet, and we're going to check. She tried to try to calm me down a little bit because I was like, I started to ask some questions. Like, okay, like I started to freak out even more. And she's like, okay, well, um, sometime when this happens, we are able to stop it. We just have to give you some medication. Hopefully, we're able to stop it. And I'm like, okay, I, I was then able to take a breath and I was like, okay, so it's possible for you guys to stop it. So a doctor comes in, she comes in and she tells me that she needs to check my cervix to see if I'm dilated and how far I'm in into labor. When she checked my cervix, that was very, very painful. Like that was the most pain that I was in that whole night because she was checking it and I was having contractions at the same time. It was just, it was, it was too much. She just, she opened it up. You saw her do it too, right? She just put it in there. And then, and just moving it up just to see. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm having flashbacks. And once she did that and she took it out, she didn't say anything yet. Every time, I, I feel like we had to ask them because they were just, they were so, I feel like they were scared to freak us out or they were trying to figure out how to tell us actually before she even were you did you leave or she had told me like she said it she said well, you were she, there when she said it yeah yeah so i asked her and she was like um yeah she was like you're you're pretty dilated no, 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 no. i said that oh my god go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. she was like you're pretty dilated and i was like okay how how much and she's like you're about five centimeters to six <sighs> centimeters dilated everything was happening so fast so she tells us this and i'm here about to burst out crying and this man i go into the hallway guess up he's like i gotta use the bathroom i have to I use start the bathroom. crying i call people i call my cousins i didn't know that's what he went to go do he tells she me she didn't that know she didn't know i just tell her to go to the bathroom so she won't be worrying so i went to go tell my cousin what happened and I, I called my mom, started crying. I called her, called her father, her mother, did the same thing. I was like, I don't know what to do. And then I went back into the room because I got everything out and I told her everything's going to be fine. She started crying. I'm looking at this man and he was, it seemed like he was completely fine. How is this man so calm? Like, how is he not freaking out the whole time in the hallway having his moment? and telling everybody he just wanted to come in and look strong so I wouldn't freak out even more and be worried about the both of us and then after when she told me that I was about six centimeters dilated I asked her is it possible for you guys still to stop it and she wasn't trying to give me a direct answer she was like I mean it will try but she was like but I'm gonna be very honest with you most likely you're having this baby tonight or tomorrow morning you're just it's you're pretty far in i just i that's when i really started freaking out because i just i wasn't ready i just felt like i was so unprepared everything was happening so fast i didn't even have time to to think everything through and before you know it they're just they're rolling me into labor and delivery i was about to have this baby whether i like it or not we get into the labor and delivery and i had to have seen 12 15 nurses just coming in every single one of them they try to you know inform me that i was in good hands they all did the same thing they rub my legs rub my feet and try to comfort me and they're like everything's good you're in great hands we are going to we're gonna get through this and good job on that because it did it did help me out a little bit i felt a lot safer and then all hell broke loose <laughs> because all these nurses just started coming all i don't even know what was going on there was just so much going on At like once, there's yeah. a nurse pu putting 
shots in her arm putting, putting get, stuff into my arm and then another nurse comes out the blue and was like oh she didn't get a covid test yet she didn't get a covid test we have to we have to test her for covid i'm like huh what <laughs> and i never took the covid test before i was so afraid of it because of how far they Man, put, up, put your the thing up her nose that's it she was like Aah. that's when i started screaming <laughs> i started screaming when they put that thing up my nose because i just wasn't ready for it and the whole time i was on the phone with my mom so my mom can hear everything and she's like everything is okay she was like you're okay you're okay and i'm here screaming and i could hear her crying a little bit because she knew like i was i was so scared there was just there was just so much going on on after the covid test it um everything settled down a little bit i got that big swab stuck just up my nose and they had to poke me like three times to get my vein they then had to lay me down all the way because they had to take off the pressure off of my pelvis my uh, my pelt my whatever they had to no my pelvis my pelvis my pelvis uh, is it pelvic or pe pelvis I don't know now. Oh my God! Where's you said my it phone? Too much. I know my pelt. My they had to take the pressure. They know what you're talking about. Yes, they had to take the pressure down there, so they had to have my hand. Oh, pressure off. Huh? Pressure off. Right? They had to take the pressure off down there. They had to have my legs a little elevated, and that was so uncomfortable because I just wanted to sit up. I was getting hungry, and I was very, very thirsty, but they said that I couldn't eat or drink anything because they gave me a drug that causes a lot of women to have nausea and they vomit a lot when they on that drug, so I couldn't eat or drink anything. They did give me some ice chips, which he had to feed me like every 20 minutes because I just felt like I had cotton mouth, and I was here choking all the ice chips if he fed me too many so he had to give me like one itty bitty ice chip every single time i don't know any medical terms i forgot all the words and phrases but they put that little thing in my bladder so that if i needed to use the bathroom i didn't i wouldn't have to get up because i did take an epidural so at first i didn't plan on having an epidural because i just I don't know I don't know why I just I was just trying to you know prolong it until I I just didn't need it um, he didn't really he really didn't want me to get it because he was so afraid of it even though he wasn't the one that was getting it I was if they do anything wrong you'll be paralyzed for life you know that right yeah but so I had asked the nurse I was like well what do you think I should do she was like I'm gonna tell you the truth so much is going on right now you've been through so much I feel like the feel like you should get it because if the pain becomes too unbearable it's just gonna be something else on top of it I might be so scared that I'm pushing him it's gonna go longer than it has to because of how afraid I was and how much pain I, I would be in so she told me that I was like okay give me two minutes she left the room she came back and i was like you know what yeah give me that epidural so i went ahead and i got the epidural supposedly it was huge i didn't see it i didn't even look at it i was about this long just that going in her back it was painful to me it felt like a flame in the middle of my back like somebody was taking a torch or um you know those candle lighters and they were just leaving it there that's what it felt like it burned um, but it went smoothly after that after I got the epidural um, that joke kicked in fast yo I felt like I was in the clouds like I was I felt drugged up like that's why I feel like the whole experience was a dream because once I got the epidural it really felt like I was half asleep throughout the whole process throughout she everything feel her leg she was tripping she was being yeah I, as soon as I got it I started to shake really bad so sometimes people get very very shaky and that's what I got um, it was very un I felt like I, I couldn't help myself like I was just shaking uncontrollably and once it kicked in and I couldn't feel my legs I didn't realize that that's how bad it was gonna be I felt I touched my leg I took I looked at the nurse and I was like what am I touching cuz it felt it felt so weird I looked at the nurse and she was like that's your leg like what that's my leg I can't feel it though I would think about moving my legs and they wouldn't move and I'm like yo what if this what if I never get that feeling back what if I'm just I'm just forever paralyzed 
I was that was scary. That That's was scary. one of the scariest things. Like literally, imagine you're like, move your foot, like foot, move, move, move. You know, like like trying to you know, process you, it, and you you're know, when you're is, dreaming, your foot you, is just not moving. You know, when you're dreaming and you're trying to run from something in your dream, and you just can't run fast. <laughs> you're trying to run fast, or you're not going anywhere. Yeah, you're not going anywhere. You just like let me go. Go. Oh yeah, that's how I felt. That's how I felt with my legs. Like my legs, they weren't working. That was scary. So I would, I, I had to stop thinking about it, and I just tried to make myself go to sleep. So he went ahead and put some. What did you put? Was it? Uh, water music. Waterfall. Was it waterfall or rain? I think it was rain, which really, really relaxed me. I was actually able to go to sleep for a few hours, and they told me to to get some rest and tell them if uh if anything happened or if my water broke because at this time my water hadn't broke yet so that's why i was just chilling in the labor and delivery they were waiting for my water to break so they would come in and check they're like everything is good and i'm like yep yeah. so at around two in the morning two two thirty in the morning i felt something down there like I, I wet myself which is so crazy because when they told me to call them when my water broke I was like how in the world am I supposed to know when it breaks because I literally couldn't feel anything down there they're like don't worry you're gonna know and come to find out I, I, I really did know when it happened so I well it woke me up from my sleep I felt something and I was like <gasps> and that's when my heart started beating because they told me once my water broke it's go time like that meant that I would have to deliver right then and there yep. so i felt it and i started to freak out a little bit again and then i call eric i was like i think my water broke so he goes and he checks he's like yeah yeah it was, it was a lot of water a little blood too really it was blood yeah yeah uh, see. oh my god yeah so my water broke and then he went ahead and called the nurse in and they were just like all right it's go time like you have to deliver this baby they called in my doctor all right it's time for you to push oh my god i don't know what i was thinking i didn't know how i thought that it was gonna feel like but when i tell you i i didn't feel anything i was pushing and i thought i wasn't doing it right they told me to just push like you were pooping that's what i was trying to do and i was hoping and praying that i wouldn't poop because Supposedly, a lot of women do that when they oh, she just been sitting in that soggy doo doo. Oh my ew! So I was just pushing, um, and literally, not even five minutes. They were like, "All right, all right, stop pushing." I'm like, "Why? How come?" And I literally see, and he, he was right there, within no. five minutes. Like I think I pushed maybe like six times, and not they, even. And then after that, they took something else out. I forgot what it was called. Then they had to deliver the placenta. The placenta. Hey, that thing was now. What is that? Once I delivered him, I literally just saw him, then him hand him off to the NICU doctor and nurses. And they were just putting the breathing tube in. It was just, everything was happening so fast. I couldn't even really see him. Um, but they let me know that he was breathing, which I was so happy about. We wheeled him in into the NICU. Uh, they had to finish everything. They had to make sure that he was completely fine. Everything else was good. Um, and then they had to put him in his incubator. He was one pound, 10 ounces, very small. He was- Foot long. He was a foot long. We went to the NICU, we saw our baby boy. I'm gonna try to insert some pictures to show y'all how small he was. If anyone wanted to know the reason as to why I went into preterm labor, my doctor ended up telling me that they went and took my placenta for testing and they saw that I had a high white blood count. They believed that I had an infection that just moved into the amniotic fluid and my body saw that infection and just wanted to get rid of it so my body just made me go into labor i feel as though everything happened for a reason he wanted to i feel like he wanted to come that day yo mind you he was supposed to come in june that's when my birthday is his birthday is march 2nd around the time of his dad's birthday mm -hmm. his dad's birthday is march 12th so he was supposed to come june 16th i believe my birthday is in June, the beginning of June, and he comes March 2nd around his birthday. Yes, sir. So he wanted to be a Pisces 
Thank God, because I don't know if I could have dealt with another Gemini. I'm already a Gemini. You talking about you? I gotta deal with a Gemini. But I I heard that boys are di boy Gemini's are different from girl Gemini's. This is how he looks now, my big boy. So he is no. six months now. Um, his corrective age is two and a half months. Um, but he's six months. He's a healthy, strong baby. And he was in the NICU for three months, and we went through a lot. So you gonna talk in the camera now? You gonna say hi? Huh? Whenever he got through an obstacle, it just felt like something else came up. Always and, something else. Yeah, and it just it kept on happening for a good two months or so, until finally he got a lot better, and um, it was time for him to come home. So he did come home on oxygen, but after that, within two weeks or so, he was all good. He was strong enough. He could breathe on his own, and he has been good ever since. Yeah. Right? Been eating. I've been growing. Yep. Yeah. I think that's the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please, yeah, tell him. Tell him. You hear don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Where are you going? Tell them. Tell them don't forget to subscribe. And stay tuned for more videos. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye, guys.